HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Whether you're buying a new car or used one, it's a big investment, which is why you should choose Pennzoil Platinum. It helps extend the life of your engine and protect it up to 15 years or 500,000 miles, whichever comes first, guaranteed. That's because Pennzoil's base oil is made from natural gas and 99.5% free from engine clogging impurities. The proof is in the Pennzoil. Enrollment required. Keep your receipts. Other conditions apply. See Pennzoil.com slash warranty for full details. Find it at Firestone Complete Auto Care. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. From audiobooks to um, Audible Originals, guided meditation, uh, you name it, they've got it. And you can get a free trial by going to audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth. Uh, suggest that you do. I think you'll find uh, that you are gaining time because you can, uh, quote, read an audio book. You can listen to an audio book while you're doing something else. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to gain recognition as a great resource for small business owners, sales professionals, business leaders of all kinds. And I believe this is because of the guests who uh, join me to have a conversation. These are folks with expertise in particular areas of business and they chat with me and share that information with all of you so that you can get the answers you need uh, and do better things in your business. Today we actually have a returning guest. Uh, Rob Brayman is joining me again today uh, to talk about uh, a different topic. Rob has a long-standing reputation as an entrepreneur. He spent 15 years working directly with business owners to improve strategic planning, operations, growth, and business development. Rob formed Cogent Analytics with the specific intent of bringing tools of better management, organization, and profitability to Main Street America's small to mid-sized businesses. Rob is personally engaged with over 1,900 businesses across the United States working to further the interests of other business owners like himself. 
Thanks for uh, spending some more time with me today, Rob. Uh, Diane, truly uh, a privilege and an honor to be back on the show. We had so much fun the first time. I guess I get to inflict myself on you and your listeners a second time today. And I think it will be just as much fun as it was last time. So <laughs> here we go. And the listeners, you know, they, they can decide if, if that is true. Um, we are talking today about something called the Profit Platform, and, and I am so fascinated by this. I want to dive right in and ask you to explain what that is. Uh, a absolutely. I, you know, it's, it's, it's funny, I guess, I, you know, when I hear 15 years, um, and it's actually 18 years now, I'm actually in my 18th year. This oh. is something that I, I was working with a, a very, what I'll call moderately sized business, probably 16 years ago. And I was trying to take a very complex series of issues that they were experiencing in their business. And I wrote it ad hoc on the board of their conference room. Um, and, it, and it really broke down or distilled down the four pillars of every business. And this is really where it was born, Diane, was business development is the oxygen to a business. People are who are the lifeblood and conduct what it is that you want to do with your business. Operations are functionally how we get things done. And measurement, both financial and operational, is how you maintain good communication, good controls, and good profit in any business of any size. So if, if we go around the horn, um, sales, people, operations, and measurement all interact. Not, they're not um, monolithic. They must all be a leg on the chair. And if one chair, one leg of that chair is deficient, what we see is over and over again, you see impact to negative profit implications. So businesses that are either underperforming or operating below uh, profit standard. Okay, Th this makes a lot of sense to me. And, and if I'm hearing you correctly, what I'm hearing is all four of these pillars have to be there. Like you can't have a three-legged stool on this one. They all have to be uh, maximized and operating at, at their peak. Otherwise, whichever one is struggling impacts profit significantly. Is, is that fair? Absolutely. Okay. Yep, I think it's exceptionally well said and well reframed. Okay, wonderful. So I would like us to go through the four pillars j briefly, you know, just like one, one by one, like, um, like let's start, I, I love the whole measurement thing, but let's start with business development. So, you, you know, it's the oxygen. Talk to me some about the impact that that has on the profitability of a business. So if we take business development as a standalone pillar, you can imagine business development is comprised of both sales and marketing. So how do we physically drive revenue in the door and how do we build our brand? Most often what we see is people treat sales as, especially for my professional services clients like engineers and architects, you know, sales is a science as much as the science of business. And you have to approach who we're going after, what is your market pressure, what types of areas of opportunity can we get penetration, are we competitive, you know, you don't want to be the cheapest in the market, uh, you can stand to be the most expensive in the market, but that usually requires a substantive amount more effort and a high standards of quality and control. Um, business development as a behavior usually is points of penetration, behavior to get maximize those points of penetration and the ability to escalate those opportunities through, notice how I said good control systems when I mentioned yeah. it before. Yeah. In absence of measurement, we see business development fail 100% of the time. You may get lucky and you may have a relationship that is giving you business, but if you fail to diversify your business one 
one hiccup in that one relationship is what kills businesses. So you always have to be thinking about bringing in or generating new revenue from alternative sources, not just organic growth through one resource. Oh, I, you know, this is so interesting for me uh, because I was just talking to someone who was telling me that uh, for the first couple of years in their business, um, they, the, it grew by word of mouth and referrals. They did no sales and marketing. They didn't need to. Like basically, all they had to say was, this is what we're doing, and people were sending them business. And then all of a sudden, that the, the market sort of changed. Mm -hmm. They shifted their business model a little, but they, they do no sales effort at all. And, and they are really, you know, in, in a bad place right now. And it speaks exactly to what you were just saying. Very common story. Yeah. <laughs> Very common story. And markets and conditions change. And that's, you know, that's, we, you and I represent the same client, client base. Yeah. Um, you know, markets change, people change. And, and let me give you an anecdotal. I have a client right now, which is probably the way I described it the way I did. I have a client right now with the same like type story that you have, except I'll add one modifier. They had been so used to doing business with this fairly large company that was giving them fairly good revenue, five, six million dollars on an annual basis. And the key purchasing agent that was in the relationship that they were doing business with got sick <gasps> and all of a sudden was no longer their key point of contact. Wow. Well, the person that got promoted into that chair had alternative relationships mm. outside of my client. Yeah. Wow. So almost overnight, they lost 80% of their revenue oh. only because the new person that was in the role shifted yeah. and elected to take that business elsewhere. And it was almost a cataclysmic event. They, yeah. they, you can imagine they had scaled their business in support of all of the revenue, all of the manufacturing, mm -hmm. all of the overhead, all of the cost were based on this $6 million worth of revenue that they were having to produce. And all of a sudden overnight, they became a million and a half. So the debt structure, everything that they had borrowed, all the machinery and equipment, everything was based on the type of business they used to be. And, and they had no diversification. So, I mean, very limited. And all it, it was like they were jumping through hoops every single day. Um, you could almost argue that this company was essentially an employee of the much larger company that was feeding them all the right. time. Right. Great husband and wife team, salt of the earth guy. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, when we, when we got involved, it was really about, implementing okay you have salespeople, but you're used to just getting organic growth from the existing relationship and we have to shift that behavior because none of the people that you're calling salespeople right now actually know how to sell yeah. <laughs> they were order takers right right oh it's so tragic and it happens everywhere and and for me, I mean, you're, you're, uh, and the, your story is, is a cardinal, it, it goes against one of the cardinal rules, which is don't put all your eggs in one basket. No, when the basket leaves, you, got it. you are screwed. No single relationship to any entrepreneur should represent greater than 40% of your annualized revenue. No. Ever, 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 ever. Yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing that. I mean, th this is, of course, this is why we're having this conversation. It, it is mind blowing uh, that so many, you know, because I don't know what it is. You think, wow, this is so great. We're going to have this great big pot of revenue, which frankly, I would argue is not the best way to get profit, but. It is not very yeah. well put. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're really not maximizing the potential of your business it so, feels good but oh it, yeah that's it cancer without pain as i call it <laughs> wow <laughs> it happens all the time and i want to i want to i want to point out for your listeners if you listen to that story very carefully 
not only did they have deficient business development structure, they were not accustomed to going to market. They were not accustomed to, I mean, at best, they were putting buckets outside and doing a rain dance. Yeah. But you have business development practices and how to sell, what we're going after, how do we measure, how do we price competitively? Those are all business development behaviors. If you go over to the people or organizational structure side of that equation, we now have a bunch of people who, who don't know how to go to market. Yeah, right. So, so you've got training issues, you've got recruiting issues, you've got different behavioral expectations out of, out of most immediate, oh my gosh, if we don't change this, we'll go out of business. So all of these people that were order takers or you know CSRs, customer service reps, all of a sudden, every member of the team had to learn what it meant to go develop sales be yeah. because that was absent before. So go down to the operational pillar. In our operations, all of a sudden, we had to define new product. We had to develop new behaviors, new process flow, new QAQC policies and practices. And, and if you go over to measurement, this husband and wife team, although salt of the earth, were really not measuring most, if not all of the internal operational measurements or people measurements that would empower their people to do a better job. So the whole entity was ill prepared. So even in an environment where they were doing $6 million worth of revenue, I think minimum mandatory profit in that company should have been 10 to 12%. And year over year, because they were so tethered to this large relationship and the large relationship was putting pressure on them to be competitive, yeah. that year over year, they were making no more than 5%. So you can imagine how hard they were working for a 5% return. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I just covered all of our pillars Yeah, you did. in, in, I know. in the hopes to I kind know. of illustrate this point. Yeah, it's great. And I'm going to take a quick sponsor break because then I, then I want to, you know, get asked a more uh, probing sorts of questions on, Absolutely. on this whole thing. Okay. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. As I mentioned before, well, they have thousands of titles to choose from uh, in their audiobooks, but they also have podcasts, audible originals, guided meditations, uh, you know, uh, magazines, news, you name it. If it can be spoken, they've got it. Um, I will say, so to give you an example, one of my favorite audiobooks is Evidence-Based Recruiting by one of our previous guests, Ada Tarkey. And it's a really good book. Um, and what I love about Audible is that I can listen to it anywhere and across my devices. So if I get in my car to go for a drive, I can listen to it there. And then I can pick it up, say, when I come home and I'm making dinner. I can go ahead and just you know, start from where I left off on a totally different device. Uh, so it's pretty cool. And you know what? I, I think you'll like it as well. So get a trial. Check it out for yourself. Uh, at audibletrial.com slash business growth. Today, we're speaking with Rob Brayman about the profit platform. Okay, Rob, so you just did a great job of, of giving an example, touching every pillar. I, I thought that was really fabulous. Um, let's talk some about how, a, so if there's a business owner who, you know, currently isn't going through a, a horrible situation like that husband and wife team, but how can they, um, how can the profit platform help them realize the areas of their business that can be more profitable? So, so best practice really is an exercise of engineering profit. Um, you know, it, it, what most of our clients do is they have revenue less cost equals what they get to keep. The best behavior, best in class, what we try to teach is you really should start with engineering profit, which is revenue less profit equals what you can afford to spend. Now, profit 
standalone, if you make a living and, and that living is generated from the profit of your business, you've still got to service debt. You've got to pay for growth. You've got to pay for capital expenditures. You've got to pay your taxes. And then and only then do you get to take passive income called the distribution. Yeah. So, you know, I hate to go at it from that way, but I'm such a diehard believer that the first consideration you should have as an entrepreneur is how do I generate a minimum mandatory profit and how do I engineer that profit into my business, which then forces the behavior of managing how much sales I'm going to bring in at what pricing structure with whom I'm doing business to produce a gross margin. I must have the right people with the right hats actually measured in doing the key functions that get me that engineered profit. And I have to have very efficient operations that empowers people to clearly understand how we're going to produce our product, whether that's a service offering or a part production or, or some form of retail distribution, I still have to have operations that efficiently controls costs. And the only way to do that is to have clear measurements, not over measurement. I don't want to, I don't want your listeners to hear, um, an, you know, paralysis by analysis. I want them to hear that if I have critical measurements in my company outside of my P&L, outside of my balance sheet, at the end of the month, usually by the 10th or the 15th, I should be able to know within reason how much profit I'm making because I have measured the critical functions within my business on uh, key measurement points, whether that's daily, some weekly, some, and then monthly, to get an aggregate, right? I should know what my P&L within reason is gonna tell me because I've developed good solid measurement and more importantly, empowered my people to perform operations, okay? Okay, yeah, yeah. And I, I'd like to talk about that last thing that you said about empowering people to perform operations. So it, it feels to me like the way that it, the way that it works best is when everyone is on board, when everyone is thinking along the lines of best practices, most efficient ways of, you know, high quality, because it's going to lead to healthier profits. Amen. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so, you know, we got a business owner listening. How do they, get that buy-in, you know, how, how do they pull those people into that? Uh, I, I always find, and you've probably experienced the same thing, communication from, there's a difference between management and leadership. You know, management is the function of ensuring something is done to standard and that it is done on time. That's management, right? It's not the giving of the task. It's the management function is making sure the task is completed to standard and completed on time. That's management. Leadership is about communication. It's about your people understanding your vision, understanding why we are doing what we're doing. See, people, in my personal belief, go to work every day and want to perform well. And if you yeah. don't have clearly define measurement or standards in place, what typically happens is it's, it becomes subjective instead of objective. You know, what we historically do with clients is we engage people into the discussion. It's amazing, Diane, how many times employees tell us the real truth about what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Right. You have oh, two yeah. versions of truth. You yeah. have the <laughs> owner's version of truth. And then you have everybody else that works. Exactly. There. Yeah, it's true. So, <laughs> so once you get to that, those impingement points, what, you know, cause an owner will always tell you, man, I, I communicate phenomenally well. Yeah. And, 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 and then you start really getting in and digging down and you find out that, you know, from the simplest, here's how we start our week 
to here's the clear expectations of how to perform your job well, most often people make those assumptions without any clear measurements or understanding that allows people to manage self. Um, you know, when I said people go to work every day because they want to do well, everybody wants to take care of their family, everybody wants a pay raise. You can always point to the bad employee that doesn't fit into that model, which I, which I always, sorry for the long diatribe, those are not your culture. The bad employees are the bad apples. Yeah. You know, absence of standard, substandard becomes the standard, right? Ooh, I like that. Yes. I like the way you said that. Yes. Absence of standard, substandard becomes the standard. So we always point to the bad apple, where yeah. in reality, the leadership portion is usually what is most at risk. Yeah. Yeah. The, I, 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 I'm, I'm so glad that you have said this. I, I often feel like leaders, what I say, you know, when I'm training is you have to over communicate because then you will be communicating enough. But, but, you know, so many people communicate very little and just expect that people know, well, they might, but why not err on the side of caution and say, I I'm going to make sure that I am saying this as clearly as possible and as much as possible so that people really get an understanding of not just what we're doing here, but why we're doing it. So, so do you mind if I tell an anecdotal story? Oh, please do. So I have a, a young intern and that, that I don't want to be deprecating to this young man because he's incredibly talented. One of the smartest young people I've met in a very long time. Um, but, but he's going through his own Genesis and we had a conversation about a week ago and he's in a position of authority in cogent analytics. And, you know, he's like, I keep having this challenge, which I sit down and I show them and I show them and I show them and I show them. And sometimes I find myself doing it for them. <laughs> and, and I said to him, I said, you know, therein lies your challenge. If you keep telling them what to do, <laughs> instead of asking them to come up with solutions, yeah. why do you expect them to give you anything other than substandard? Yeah. If you're not engaging them in the conversation, if you're not engaging them in the solution, if you're not, all of a sudden you've, you've now diminished them to the point of, you know, go to Sally's. Yeah. And, and that is the, that to me was a very valuable lesson about him growing into a leader's role as opposed right. to a manager's role. Yeah, definitely. Right. Right. I, the, I, one of one of the biggest disservices I think people in leadership do is they think they're supposed to have all the answers. So when someone comes to them and says, okay, what should I do here? They tell them That's instead right. of turning it around and saying, well, what do you think you should do there? You know, let's work on, initially you can say, let's work on this together. I'm curious what you think about this. And you build them, their confidence up to a place where they realize they know the answer to that question because they do know. It's like what you said about the truth. You can get the truth from the employees of what's really going on. They know the answer. They know what to do. It's just a matter of You've built a culture. The That's yes. right. You've built a culture where people will wait to be told yeah. instead of taking yeah. initiative. Yeah. And then you can't be mad at them for that. Or frustrated with them because you're right you've built that culture this is how you've said you want your company to run Ugh. so people go to work every way and they wait for an owner yeah you know they're sitting at their desk and they wait for somebody to tell them what to do as opposed to an inspired group yeah. that are always looking for solutions and and you know to your point and i have to make this hopefully this resonates with your listeners I've always said, I don't have to have all the right answers. Yeah. I've just got to have all the right questions. Yeah. Right. Right. And the right people. The, the, the best boss I ever had said to me, and I was like in my 20s, and he, so I was so lucky to, to have him so early in my career. And he said to me one day, Diane, do you know what makes me a good manager? And I said, what? And he said, that I have people like you who know what they're doing. So I don't have to know everything. It was that is most, great. I know, isn't it? 
like totally empowering, especially for a young person. You would say to me, just go do, stop telling me what you're going to do. Just go do it. I trust you. We can talk about it later if you want. So what I learned was, unless it was something that I really didn't know or, you know, really needed him for, I, I could do my job. That's right. Absolutely. And, uh, so great. And, and you, you will, know. you'll develop people in yeah. that organization. You know, the, the ne'er thee well Johnnies or the, or, or, or we all know who they are, right? Sure. Sure. All of a sudden, if you build an organization under the right spirit, the right culture, the right focus, you've got a situation where people are striving for something more than their own pocket. Yeah. Now you have the ability to scale. Now you have the ability to take on greater challenges. Now you have the ability because people grow into leadership roles or management roles yeah. and you need both. You need leaders and managers. Yeah. Right. But if you if you just stay the same and the same is mundane, then you should not have an expectation of being able to do more because. Right. That's, right. That's how in absence of the pillars, the house falls over. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the great things for me about the pillars is, is uh, partly the visual of it, because it really does. Um, you know, build in your mind a sense of a building uh, that, that, that is there. Uh, it, I think it also gives people very specific areas that they can look at and evaluate and, and improve upon where they need to, um, but also looking at them as they interact with each other. The example you gave before was really great about how they hit each other I guess I'm wondering, is there a, like a methodology or a process that a business owner could use to take a giant step back and be able to see how they uh, connect to each other and impact each other? We, so we developed, and I, I, you know, today's show is not for Rob Brayman to pimp out coach and analytics, right? That's not why you invited me on. So the best behavior internally in absent of somebody going through the exercise of a SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, mm -hmm. is if you were to take each of these individual pillars and you were to, there's enough self-help, by the way, on our website, where if you wanted to look at how the pillars and all the different functionality of the pillars interact, we give that out. So you can do a self-evaluation internally. Just my caution to your listeners is be very, very careful in self-diagnosis, right? Yeah. Doctors go to doctors <laughs> to get diagnosed. They don't self-diagnose. It's horrible. Yeah, um, <laughs> good point. <laughs> but, but yes, absolutely. We, you know, you and I have had this conversation before. I'm a diehard believer in thought leadership. So yeah. we put a massive amount of self-help guides, eBooks and sundries that allow for that self-diagnosis. You know, as long as we tell the ca cautionary tale, yeah. you, you can take each one of the pillars and self-evaluate as to, is my business development process, have I considered all the independent areas of business development and are they working well in my company? but you have to be self-effacing. You have to go through the process of getting above your forest and working on your business instead of just in your business. Right, right. So we break it down in each of the elements to allow people to self-evaluate. Um, but each one is, each one both can be reviewed independent. But again, the cautionary tale is they're not monolithic. So if you were to look at the profit platform and how it contributes to profit, remember each one of the pillars is the leg on the stool and all have to be functional. And you and I haven't talked about this in a while, but the, keep in mind that that graphic has a great big circle around it called strategic planning. And most entrepreneurs um, leave that step out, 
right? They don't yeah. really consider the strategic implications of what they're going to do next. Yes. The tendency is I've got a problem, let me go fix it, as opposed to thinking about the implications of the problem. Yeah. Sorry for a really wordy diet. No, 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 this is good. But will you talk some about the importance, I mean, will you go, go further with that and talk about the, the importance of strategic planning? So I tie it back to our profit. You know, I think that first behavior is actually engineering profit. And if we're honest with ourselves, we have to know how much profit we're going to make so that we can do the balance sheet side of the equation. And that is, how am I going to pay my, back my debt? If I'm going to grow, what is the true cost of that growth, whether that be in people, whether that be in capital expenditure called equipment, whether that be trucks or um, new computer systems, hard assets or soft assets called, you know, called people or software, all of that is paid for through profitability. So I would say start with profit first and then be very careful about how much you can absolutely afford to grow. Because if you grow too much too fast, you will grow yourself out of business because you'll wipe out all of your cash flow and you'll find yourself being profitable, but no money in the bank. Mm, that's huge. Right? Yeah. And I see this, I, I, I see this day in and day out, as you can imagine, representing entrepreneurs. And I, I don't want people to hear on this call that it's, you know, it's the itty bitty startup. I'm talking about $20 million companies I have seen literally grow themselves into bankruptcy. So, wow. so, you know, I want you to understand there's a scale to all these behaviors. Yeah. Yeah. If, go, ahead. go ahead, please. No, 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 no. no. I was just going to say that's so critically important. So please continue. Um, so start with profit first and be honest about how much your margin should be as a minimum mandatory. That is going to drive who you can hire, how much you can pay, what machinery equipment you can buy, how much debt you're going to retire, how are you going to control you know, pricing or market penetration because you can't, you know, if you're going to competitively sell based on a break-even model, you remember we said you could be either the highest or market or low. Most often, strategically, what happens, you've got to competitively price against your other people who are selling like tight goods or services in your marketplace. The real wise business owner knows how much profit he's going to make before he starts because then as you're selling, you're not selling margin on the seat of a pants. It actually is engineered into your pricing structure. And that, by the way, can be a really geeked out conversation. I don't yeah. think it will play well in a podcast, but pricing is not a fixed thing. Pricing yeah. is a malleable thing, just like discounting should not happen ad hoc. It should happen strategically. It should be part of your overall break-even strategy. That's really valuable. I think a lot of people discount for a variety of reasons and few of them are strategic. Yeah, fear, um, yeah. got to have work in the door, got to keep my people working, yeah. got to, you know, it always starts with, well, I got to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good indicator, too, because if you, if that's the first thing you say, stop, right? Yeah, <laughs> Do stop not doing go that. forward. Exactly. <laughs> So great. Uh, and, and the profit platform works for any kind of business. Does it work better for certain industries or is it across the board? Oh, no, we, okay. So the profit platform was designed to address the science of the business, the business of the business. So if you think about the wide ranging groups of clients we represent, uh, you know, we, from contractors, manufacturers, transportation, distribution, technology companies, engineering companies, architects, across the board, this is designed to address the business of the business, as opposed to what you do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the profit platform is a holistic approach. It resides within a strategic planning bubble. And, and it really speaks to the behaviors of an entrepreneur and it allows you to self-diagnose a bit, although I highly recommend, it doesn't have to be yeah. my firm, I highly recommend to a business owner to participate, usually once a year, once every two years, in, in you know, professional counsel. You would, 
you know, at 50, we all have to go get a colonoscopy. And I hate to, <laughs> you know, use that metaphor. Yeah, but, that's a good one. <laughs> but, but in a business, well, can imagine, Diane, you know, having a, a business colonoscopy sounds just almost Awful. offensive. <laughs> <laughs> We need to come up with a different diagnostic. <laughs> yeah, we, I, um, so <laughs> moving, know, moving on. on right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, every business should step back yeah. because we're not supposed to have as entrepreneurs, and I've learned this over you know four businesses, thousands of businesses that I've represented. Stepping back from your company is a really, really healthy exercise. When you really focus on finding not what you're doing great at, because everybody knows what they're doing great at. You know, yeah. if you do it, I, you know, let me give you the last piece of counsel. Everybody that's ever done a SWOT analysis on themselves, they always focus on their strengths and opportunities. Every business owner I've ever inter interviewed <laughs> can, can tell me about what they're awesome at. Yeah. And where and what they think that they're, they're going to be able to do better, where a real president's responsibility is the right side of the page, as I call it, and that's weaknesses and threats. When you're running your company, you got to you've got to be aspirational, you got to be visionary, you got to be able to do the things that drive behavior amongst your employees and your customers, your vendors. But every day, you've got to be thinking about where you're weak. And what threats do you see in the marketplace? Remember, weaknesses are internal, threats are external. Yeah. And you've a good leader, a good president, a good entrepreneur is always forcing themselves over to that right side of the page because that's where companies get hurt, right? And you know, we all care about our people, we care about our employees, we care about success. Um, and, and please don't hear greed. That's not why I'm telling this mm -mm. story. Mm -mm. Right. Yeah. You know, that that weaknesses and threats, if if I had the silver bullet, I would say every entrepreneur really needs to start their business. I, and, and please don't I'm not dampening all of the wonderful vision that it takes to become an entrepreneur, business owner and, and do something amazing called starting a small business. I'm talking about the things that really hurt because we're right. not paying attention to weaknesses and threats. Right. And, and if you look at if you look at weaknesses and threats as opportunities That's for right. improvement and growth, then That's they're right. not as, you know, awful. They're not as scary. They're not monsters who live in the dark. They're, they're places where you can improve. Opportunities for success. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, Rob, I have loved this conversation, as I think you can tell, and I really appreciate you explaining this. This is really um, valuable, tactical, specific information uh, that I think, you know, anyone can get. Um, and for those people who want to learn more and uh, about the private platform, but also uh, about you and what you're doing over there, would you uh, let them know how they can find you, please. A absolutely. It's uh, www.cogentanalytics.com. Um, and if you want to download one of the ebooks, we put out a massive amount of content to allow entrepreneurs and business owners to do a little self investigatory work. Uh, if you want to talk to one of our advisors, we don't charge for that. So please, you know, either call us direct at um, one eight three three four my profit, and that's the num the, that's the number for my profit. Or we're in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's three three six 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 five eight one five four. But we put that eight hundred number out there because we really are. Uh, we're in twenty five different states. By the end of twenty uh, twenty two, we'll be in all fifty states. It's it's kind of my mission, as you can tell, Diane. This is the <laughs> This is the hill I'm climb, climbing. It's the what will I do every day. But um, sorry, I, I didn't mean to carry on like that. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. You're not passionate at all about what you no, do. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to. No, I'm kidding. Um, it, it's really, it, it is great. And I so appreciate the information and letting people know how they can find you. And, and, and 
seriously, folks, do yourselves a favor, go to the website, download some of the content, do the outreach. If, if you only walk away with an inkling or two of areas of your business that you can focus on, it, it's worth the, the time and the energy. And, you know, part of the reason that I have folks share their expertise with all of you is so that you know who's out there who can really help you in your business if you are in any of the situations that we address on this podcast. So, you know, take advantage uh, of that. I'm, I'm finding the best there is, and Rob is certainly one of those, those people. So, Rob, thank you. Uh, truly, truly. Thanks for having me back on. I, I, I always have a wonderful time on your show. I have a wonderful time with you. So thanks. I'm, I'm glad that you enjoy it. And listeners, I hope you got a lot out of this. I'm, I'm sure you did because I know I did. Uh, and I'd like to thank audible.com. Uh, you know, go pick up a free trial of audible.com at audibletrial.com slash business growth. Check out the audiobooks and the programs that they've got, you know, for yourself. Find the stuff that you think is interesting and um, just, you know, give it a test drive. Uh, see if it's something you want to incorporate into your world. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film, Pip, 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 Powder Donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Pip, 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 powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey podcast listeners, my name is Paul O'Connor and I'm the host of the Rust Belt Rundown, a show that highlights valuable insights from manufacturing executives and business leaders in Northeast Ohio and beyond. We convene these leaders for candid discussions about business, regional happenings, industry trends, entrepreneurship, and more. With a wide range of guests and topics, there is something for everyone. Listen to Rust Belt Rundown for free on Spotify, Apple, or your favorite podcast app.